Welcome. Welcome to week two of PSSL 6240, Political Violence, Terrorism, and George Washington University Safety and Security Leadership Program. I just want to start off with uh, some announcements. Um, first, uh, as you all know, the Adobe Connect session is 14 May at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what that is, is you'll get a link for the Adobe Connect session. All you have to do is click on it as a guest and you'll be put into the, the actual system. Uh, if you're briefing, send me your slides. And I know two people are briefing. Send me your slides ahead of time so I can uh, post them in the actual Adobe Connect. And if you haven't seen Adobe Connect beforehand, all it is is you'll have your video camera, you'll have your narration. Each one of you will see each other and you all will see the briefers as they're briefing as they're going through the PowerPoint slides. So it's kind of a interactive uh, VTC on steroids, video teleconference on steroids that you guys can all uh, participate on. Uh, this will give a chance for the briefers to show off their uh, presentation skills. I also give a chance for all of you to see one another. Uh, you'll be amazed that in this cohort, you'll all be a cohort for the next couple of years in this program. And you'll all be typing messages from each from one another. Uh, but just being able to see and have a a visual of what that next person is on the other end of that email will help a lot, not just in this course, but as you progress through the, the curriculum. So that's one of the reasons why I, I use Adobe Connect and some others will, uh, some other teachers will, but just bottom line, Adobe Connect session, 14 May, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's optional if you're not briefing, but again, I, I, I would recommend at least just going to the first one. Uh, and if you can't make it, just, just shoot me a note and please let me know. Uh, please keep up the effort. Uh, the way that it works, I, the, the comments were great. The thought process was great for the, the first uh, discussion section. The way it always happens, everyone is enthused. Everyone wants to get their, their points out in the first week. And then it kind of goes down as the class progresses. Please don't, don't lose the effort. Kind of keep that intensity up. Just keep in mind there'll be two questions per uh, section from here on in, so make sure you have uh, you have that incorporated. Uh, so again, please please keep up the effort and I will be uh, grading these and give you telling you you know what your pluses and minuses are uh, this week. And then the one thing I just want to mention uh, in person classes. Um, you can go one way or another on these, uh, but the the I know a lot of you taught or live in the DC metro area and there is a program that's in person uh, that the, for the safety and security leadership program that meets out in Arlington. If you are in Arlington or you are in the DC area, um, you know just just consider maybe dropping in on one or two of those classes. Uh, sometimes you get you know, some people like it online, some people have to travel, some people have other commitments. Uh, some people get a different experience in person as well. So for the if you're in the fall semester, uh, I, I do this all the time. Just, you know, if you want to sit in on a class for, uh, not my classes because you're already taking this, but if you want to sit in on another class, I, I would recommend doing so just, just for the sake of getting a, a different experience. So with that being said, just review of... Uh, Last week, we review of week one, terrorism as an existential threat. I saw all the comments. I think the consensus was that terrorism is not an existential threat. That we, meaning the United States, the media, even our political establishment, tends to overhype the threat. And I, I agree with that. I think they, they overhype uh, the threat on magnitudes. Uh, what I don't agree with is I don't necessarily agree with the Atlantic article, and I don't necessarily agree with focusing on terrorism as another policy problem like vehicular accidents or murders that uh, you need to solve by uh, in body counts. Um, so if 35,000 people die of vehicular accidents and only 10 people die of, of, of terrorism, I, I, I don't think that's the proper metric to weigh uh, the terrorism threat on. That doesn't mean I don't think we overhype the terrorism threat, but I think the Atlantic article, the metrics they use are, are not accurate. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, uh, maybe that puts me in the middle, but that's my, my thoughts or my personal ideas. 
is ISIS an existential threat? And think about these thoughts going forward. Um, is ISIS an existential threat? Just if you've watched the news, particularly when ISIS was coming up over the, the previous summer and, and early fall, uh, how many senators got up and said, ISIS is going to kill us all? The next 9-11 will come from ISIS. They are building WMD to strike against the United States in the ISIS-controlled areas of northern Syria and, and northern Iraq. Um, I don't believe that one bit. Uh, I do not believe ISIS is an existential threat, and this kind of goes along with our, our summary for week one. Um, I think that's a classic example of overhyping a threat. Um, now, I, I don't... There, there's reasons to oppose ISIS, but do they represent a threat to our existence in the United States? Um, I think you're giving them a lot more credit than they deserve, and I'll leave it at that. Was Ebola an existential threat? Um, if you were in Liberia and if you were in Sierra Leone, uh, sure, yeah, it definitely impacted the way you, do, you can go about your day-to-day -day life. Even though Ebola didn't have the same number of casualties as, let's say, malaria or dehydration or any of those other third world uh, diseases. Um, just having that one, that you know, couple of thousand people impact shut down commerce in Sierra Leone, shut down commerce in, in the capital Liberia and prevented people from going to their day to day. Through. So yes, Ebola was an existential threat if you were in their, those areas. In the United States, not so much. And I think we, again, overreacted to this, this threat. Uh, you know, you, you had a handful of people come here, uh, uh, mainly doctors and nurses that were exposed, and it made the front page news. Unfortunately, it was an election year, so you, uh, or midterm election year, so that, that kind of overhyped the issue. And I think... Uh, we 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 overhyped it in the United States to a uh, pretty uh, grotesque degree. Now I'll I'll say that, and that brings me up to my last point: Do Americans overreact to threats? Uh, what I'll say to this is, uh, after the Boston attack in 2013, uh, the security forces in Great Britain and Israel laughed at us the way we 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 stopped the whole city from operating in boston that we went through all this uh all these uh militarization all these military exercises essentially on in massachusetts in the boston area uh and people didn't go about their day-to-day -day basis uh if that happened in tel aviv uh on a friday by saturday tel aviv would be bustling in london after the 7-7 attacks on uh uh, June 7th or July 7th, 2005, after the bus attacks there, London went about its normal business. Uh, we can debate why. I mean, London and Israel have been more targeted by terrorists. We don't get targeted as much, so we kind of overhype the threat. But I, I'll, I'll say that Americans do tend to overreact to the terrorism threats. And I'll, I'll let you, you decide on that. So this was kind of, this week was kind of, a, a, a theme that we're going to see from every week from, from here on in, whether we're, when we talk about policy, when we talk about uh, definitions of terrorism, when we talk about counterterrorism strategy, uh, is terrorism existential? Are the, the efforts we're making worth it? Are the monies and the, the, the lives that we've spent, are they worth it? So those are kind of the, uh, the questions that we will, uh, that will come up and down during the rest of the uh, the, the quarter. Uh, I will say this just to give you a, a hint. Um, this will not be on the exam. Ex terrorism is an existential threat. This is more to give you that background information so you can uh, see the rest of the course through, uh, through detail. So this will not be a, a, a graded uh, or be part of your final. So uh, preview of week two, preview, or preview of week two, uh, I apologize, I should say week two YouTube uh, preview of next week. Uh, I've assigned one day in September. Uh, I asked at the beginning to buy the disc, but I, it's now on YouTube, so I can't, because uh, of copyright laws, I can't give you the YouTube URL, but if you Google it or YouTube search it, you'll, you'll find it if you don't have the disc. So one day in September, great flick, 
great, uh, great movie. I uh, highly recommend it. Um, would not watch it with your kids or your family members. Uh, just there's some disturbing scenes there, so just keep that in mind. When you're looking at one day in September, think think the following things. Think of um, the poor response by the German police authorities in dealing with what happened at Munich. Uh, the interagency foul-ups that happened that led to this kind of tragedy. Uh, so think of that. Think of how terrorism, you how these terrorists used the platform given uh, given to them to publicize their cause. Um, and just just to give you a little bit of background, uh, this was the first. Uh, this was the first uh, real 24-hour uh, color TV event the Olympics were, and these terrorists used that platform to advance their their cause. So think of those two things as you're as you're uh, as you're watching this video. And finally, related to this week, uh, you'll see at the end uh, how these terrorists and I don't I shouldn't say quote because they were terrorists, but to a lot of the world. They were not terrorists. How they were uh, greeted. Uh, many were. Many people didn't view them as terrorists. Many view, people view them as freedom fighters. Uh, and well, that is a big deal of week two. Is what is a terrorist? What's a freedom fighter? So four waves of terrorism. Uh, that's a big part of this week. Uh, read that article. It's it's a good article. It packages the history of terrorism very well. Uh, go through the lectures that I talk about it and focus on those two case studies, the FLN and uh, the Urgun. Those are the two case studies that are, are kind of focal points for the 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 week. Uh, hint, 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 four waves of terrorism will be part of your exam. So take studious notes. Uh, make sure you, you kind of focus on those uh uh, on the readings as well as the lectures. Uh, one thing I will say uh, that I want to get across at the beginning, the, the lectures are the mainstay of this course, uh, the audio lectures. Uh, don't just treat those lectures like a, a uh, educational experience that you might have if you're in the government where you just flip through them just to get through them. Listen to the lectures, re-listen to them if you need to, take notes on them as if you're uh, in a lecture hall uh, and, and inter interact with them in, in, in detail. So make sure you know those lectures are kind of a, a cornerstone of your educational experience. Hoffman's chapter one through four. Uh, chapter one deals with the definitions of terrorism, so read that pretty clearly. And then two through four, again, we'll cover this history of, of terrorism as well. And then finally, your paper will, will go into this, um, the what is a terrorist? Uh, and when you're trying to look at whether you're watching one day in September or listening to the lecture or interviewing on the discussion board, what are the facets that make up a terrorist vice a freedom fighter, vice a criminal entity? Why do we consider uh, bombings against Hiroshima and Nagasaki, not terrorism, while the September 11 attacks are? What are the facets that separate those two uh, entities. So think about that as you're going through the readings and uh, look forward to hearing you on the discussion section.